Hi everyone, it's Tish with Naptime Creations. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out a lot. So hit that subscribe button. Today we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to top coat your acrylic pores with resin. So this is a 12 by 24 acrylic pore painting I made on my channel previously. I taped the back with electrical tape. You can use electrical tape, duct tape, painter's tape. I had electrical tape, so that's what I'm using. I have my piece raised up off my table on four um, little lids. These are just little laundry soap lids. I like to use these because they're all the same size and the resin peels right off if you get any resin on these while your painting is drying. And I have my table protected with wax paper, making sure that my piece is level. This is critical when you're working with resin. You want to make sure that your workspace is 100% level. So I have all three of those steps completed. The tape, made sure it was level, raised it up off my table, protected my table with some wax paper. And now we're going to measure out our resin. Today I'm using the Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy. This epoxy is a one-to-one -one ratio. So I was actually working on quite a few projects at once so I'm measuring out 24 ounces so I'm going to pour in 12 ounces of my part A which is this here and then I'm going to measure out 12 ounces of my part B so it's a one-to-one -one ratio 12 plus 12 equals 24 but if I was just going to be top coating this 12 by 24 canvas I would only use six ounces total so I would use three ounces part A, three ounces part B, mix that up, and then you're ready to go. But since I was working on quite a few different projects when I made this, I did 24 ounces. So I poured in 12 ounces of my part A, this is 12 ounces of my part B, and then we're gonna mix it up. Super simple and easy to do this. I know before I started with resin, I was really intimidated by resin. Um, but after I did it a few times, I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. I want to also say you want to make sure you're wearing nitrile gloves when you work with resin. Nitrile gloves have general chemical resistance. So you want to make sure you're wearing nitrile gloves, long sleeves, and a respirator mask. I use a 3M half mask respirator. You can get it off Amazon and I'll link that down below as well. So now we're going to mix up our resin. I'm using just a this is just like a plastic spatula. spatula. <laughs> you can get these off Amazon as well. I'll link them down below. When you mix, you want to mix slowly and you want to scrape the bottom of your cup, scrape the sides of your cup, scrape off your stir stick as well. You want to make sure you're fully incorporating those parts A and B together. And you can see there's lots of striations and kind of like strings in my cup. You'll know that your product is 100% mixed when there are no more little stringy lines in your cup of resin. And I'm going to mix this up for five minutes. I tend to overmix my resin just because I want to make sure it's 100% mixed. So if you mix for five minutes, your stuff will be good to go and it'll be mixed up. So here we are five minutes later. You can see it does have some bubbles, but don't worry, we are going to take care of those. I'm going to pour six ounces into another little cup here because that is how much we're going to need to do this project. So I'm just going to pour in six ounces into a separate cup and I'm going to hit my canvas with my heat gun just in case any little dust or debris was on my canvas. You want to make sure that that is cleaned off before you go in with your resin. I hit my uh, heat gun on the little six ounces that I poured into this separate cup here and now we're ready to go. I'm going to pour this out onto my canvas. You also want to make sure you're wearing long sleeves when you work with resin. I was not. I was being naughty today. I was not wearing long sleeves but you want to make sure you wear long sleeves when you work with resin. I am very very careful when I work with resin because I've been working with it for quite a few years now but if you're new to resin you want to make sure you wear long sleeves. You don't want to get resin on your skin. If you do stop what you're doing and immediately go wash it off with hot soapy water. And I'm taking my gloved hand again wearing nitrile gloves and I'm just going to hit it with my torch to pop any bubbles. Start smoothing it out with my gloved hand 
And when I do this, I like to st start on the top, make sure that the top has 100% coverage, and then I worry about the sides. Always wanna make sure that the top is completely covered and you can always worry about the sides later because it does not take much resin at all to just go over the sides of your canvas. And again, if you wanna see how I made this acrylic pour painting, I will link that video down below. It's a really easy technique and I just love, love, love how this one turned out. So I wanted to top coat it with resin. So I'm just taking my gloved hand. I like to use my gloved hand because you can really feel if there's any bare spots of resin on your painting. Your hand will not glide smoothly over your piece. It'll kind you'll be able to just feel it when there's not resin on or you'll have like a little bit more resin on this spot over here. Then you can just take your gloved hand and kind of smooth out the resin so you have a nice even coat. Now I'm taking my gloved hand and just going around the edges and the sides of my canvas making sure that they have good coverage as well. I had a little bit of resin left in my cup so I was just adding a little bit more to the right side of my painting here. I could feel with my gloved hand that there wasn't as much resin on this side as there was on the left side. So I'm just gonna smooth that out. This is honestly so easy to do, you guys. Um, but you do wanna make sure you know you're wearing your respirator mask, make sure you're wearing your nitrile gloves and long sleeves, and you're working in a well-ventilated area when you work with resin. Just smoothing that out again, I'm gonna go in with my torch and pop bubbles, go in with my heat gun and pop bubbles, and that's pretty much it. Very easy to do this. Um, you also do wanna make sure you have an, some type of LED light. You can get an LED flashlight. They even have portable LED ring lights on Amazon for like 15 bucks. You can pick them up and uh, move them around, or you can use the flashlight on your cell phone. Just be really careful if you're holding your phone over your canvas. Um, because you don't want to drop your phone in the wet resin. I have done that before. It was very, very messy to clean up. But you can see, see I turned on my overhead LED lamp and when you do that, you can see all the dust, any little bubbles that are on the resin. So just go in with your heat gun to pop those bubbles, squat down from different angles, really get a good look at it, make sure there's no little dusties landed up in your resin. Um, any pet hair if you have pets. Another thing I like to do is I like to lint roll myself before I do any type of project like this because nine times out of ten the dust and debris and pet hair are coming off of your clothing and getting onto your wet resin. So just go over yourself with a lint roller before you do this. You could see I had a little piece of dog hair um, right there. I picked it out with my popsicle stick. But once you get over or you get an LED light on your piece, you'll really be able to see any bubbles, pet hair, dust, any imperfections in that resin finish. And you can just scoop them out with a little toothpick um, and then that's it. This step I'm doing here is optional. I am gonna coat this piece with some glass glitter. I love, love, love finishing my acrylic pores this way. You do not have to do this if you just wanted a clear resin top coat. Um, just basically finish making sure there's no dust or debris in your painting and then cover it up with an upside down storage container and let it dry for 24 hours. But I'm gonna go over this piece with some glass glitter. You can get this from Laura's Art Corner. I'll link it down below. It really gives your acrylic pores a gorgeous, gorgeous sparkle. So I'm just going in and sprinkling on my glass glitter really super simple and easy. I don't like to hit the sides with this product um, because it can be sharp. So I just really try to concentrate on the top of the piece with the glass glitter. And once I have my glass glitter on, I cover it up with the upside down Sterilite storage container, let it dry for 24 hours. Here we are the next day. I'm gonna take my piece, kind of tilt, tip it up over a piece of wax paper so I can catch any of that glass glitter that um, didn't get stuck to the resin and save that for another project. Just kind of tap, tap, tap it over my wax paper. Get off any extra, but you can see that gorgeous sparkle. And check this out. I have hardly any resin drips on my wax paper. And that is because six ounces is the perfect amount that I have found to use for a 12 by 24 canvas. Um, the rule of thumb I like to use is like four ounces for every 12 by 12 canvas. Um, if you go and 
Google like a resin calculator, it's going to tell you you need a lot more than that. And just with experience and over time, I have kind of narrowed it down to about four ounces is good. You don't want to put a ton of resin, especially on canvas, because resin is heavy, so it will sink and it will pull in the center of your canvas and pull away from the edges of your piece. So less is more when you are doing a resin top coat. And I promise you four ounces is more than enough for a 12 by 12 painting or six ounces for this 12 by 24 was the perfect amount. And I pulled the tape off the back. Here's how it turned out. Really super sparkly and beautiful. Um, like I said, you don't have to do the glass glitter if you don't want to, um, but I just really, really love finishing my acrylic pores this way. It's so sparkly and beautiful. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you give top coating your acrylic pores with resin a try. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll link all the materials I use down below in the description box, along with any coupon codes that I have. I have a coupon code for the resin, the mixing cups, and the glass glitter. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye, guys.